Thanks to the Tampa Amateur Radio Club for the use of their facility and a large open lot that adjoins their property. And a special thanks to member Larry Kilo Mike for Lima Echo Whiskey, who hosted and assisted me as we set up and tested the Chameleon Envis antenna system. Navigate to the Chameleon website from the link below and you'll get a look at the various components that comprise this kit. This is what the kit might look like after the first setup. You can combine both the wire and power cord on one winder. The top two left, those are my winders, the ones next to it, those belong to Larry. Just goes to show that hams have different way of accomplishing the same things. And my favorite bag from Chameleon is this bag that goes along with this Envis kit. Or at least it was my favorite bag till the Cha sling bag came along. But this bag is more suited specifically to this Envis kit. Here's 20 minutes of my life reduced to 10 seconds for your viewing pleasure. This was just me going to the four corners of this setup and putting the cameras where I wanted them to be to capture all the video. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4, BMG, HOA Ham. This is possibly one of the most difficult videos I've ever done just due to the sheer size of the antenna footprint. It won't fit in my backyard here at the HOA without infringing on at least three neighbors property and that would draw some attention so I went to a local club and used their space and I appreciate what they've done to help me out here. The antenna is not bulky at all. It's really rather a compact antenna system, but based on the Envis configuration, you need about a 90 foot square space once you get the mast up in the air and stretch out the four wires to their appropriate location. That made it challenging to provide to you a view of how to do this. It's really a simple antenna to set up. So I've now decided in addition to the four camera view, I'm going to do some desktop to show you up front and very close in how some of the setup takes place. I mean, it's, it's... <laughs> look at this. Yeah. This thing's a beast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I first got it and I took it out of the package, I just started laughing because it's so chameleon meaning you know, you, you look they, at pictures on a website they overbuild it. and you get an idea of what it is and then you get it in your hands and it's just kind of like, this thing is unreal. Yeah. Larry was intrigued by my fiberglass mast with good reason. It's an incredible piece of gear. I'm proud to be an owner of that mast. It will go 12 feet tall and that's where we're going to hang this antenna system. Chameleon's instructions recommend 15 feet for this Envis antenna, 12 to 15 will work. Envis is not accomplished by using magical wire. It's accomplished by a list of parameters, primarily which include antenna height and takeoff angle. I think if we get a look at this in diagram form, then my workbench, what you're viewing out in the field will make a lot more sense. This is a top-down view if you are flying in a drone looking down at how this antenna would be set up with this being your matchbox and your mast. This is a cross-section view and there are two views because in one case you're using a 38-foot wire with a 7-foot piece of paracord and that's mirrored on both sides and then you go the opposite direction and you have a 25-foot piece of wire with a 20-foot piece of paracord and that's mirrored on the opposite side. So all four of these legs are the exact same length but one is made of 20 feet of paracord, 20 feet of wire as is this one. The other is made of 38 feet of wire and seven foot of power cord as is this one. So you have a 45 foot length on each side of this matching box that sits at the top of your mast. So let's go ahead and take a look at this on the workbench and I'll try to describe just one of those legs to you. Let's talk about the leg that is 38 feet long with a seven foot piece of paracord. This is the paracord. You're looking at both ends of the seven feet. This is the wire. You're looking at both ends of that 38 foot long wire. Let's start at the ground stake. If you were to attach one end of this paracord to the ground stake and put that in the ground, you then have seven feet long of paracord that's going to the end of the antenna wire that's sloping down towards the ground. I'm using a cam jam to make that connection between the paracord and the antenna wire. The antenna wire is going to slope up to the top of the matching unit, and then this matching unit is going to accept this carabiner that's going to hold the wire in place, and then you're going to attach this terminal to this stud on the top of the matching box. Think of this matching box 
as a dipole uh, matching unit, so to speak. You've got a terminal on the top for one leg of your dipole, and you've got a terminal on the bottom for the other leg of your dipole, as well as the coax feed. So once I take and attach this 38 foot wire to this wing nut on this side, guess what I'm going to do with the other 38 foot wire that goes the opposite direction? I'm going to connect it to the bottom wing nut. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the 25 foot long wire with a 20 foot long piece of paracord. I hope that's making sense. Because Larry and I were doing a rag chew and I was there doing multiple antenna setups and tests this day, I was there for a good part of the day. I think if you broke this out of the package brand new, you might have a 30 minute setup because you have to take the original wires and remove the wire ties, the same with your coax and the string. Once you installed this one time, I'm guessing a future installation might be 15 minutes max. And here we are now that we have most of the wires connected to the paracords. I'm just sending Larry to the far extremes of the world to put the four stakes in the ground. Each combo section of wire and paracord are lying flat on the ground waiting for us to erect the mast. The two wires are connected to the top and the two to the bottom on the matching box. And now I'm taking each of those four carabiners and attaching them to that top mounting post. Of course, that top mounting post is connected to the top of the mast with an amateur's best friend, zip ties. So once we get all four of these connected, then we're going to go ahead and erect the mast, get it to its height, and then we'll slowly put each of the four wires permanently in the ground so that they hold the mast up. I'm using the actual wire of the system to hold the mast in place. I can do that because this is Chameleon's wire, which has the thread of Kevlar in it. So you don't need to guy the mast. Of course, that would be beneficial if you did. That might be your preference for an operating condition. It's not necessary. The four wires will hold the mast in place. And that's how I've set it up here today. If you're doing this type of setup by yourself and not guying the mast, make sure you take your time as you pull each wire taut. If you're working with someone else, like Larry, this is the first time I ever met Larry. And for just meeting him, us two guys did a pretty good job of not toppling that mast over. Of course, if you guy it, not an issue whatsoever. In a few minutes, I will be doing a test with the 991A just to see if a typical three to one tuner can tune up this antenna. That was one of the main reasons for doing this setup. I wish I could fit this at my homeowners association because I would really like to join an Envis net and test this antenna over a period of several weeks and months. That's typically what you would want to do with a new antenna setup. I don't have the ability to do that because of the land restriction that I have, the small lot that I have. So I'm doing the next best thing, just familiarizing myself with the antenna and its setup. I wanted this antenna system because I want it self-contained in a bag if I do need to exit the HOA someday in the future. When a hurricane threatens us or I actually live through a hurricane, we stay put here. It's not too dangerous, it's a cat too, but it still takes down a lot of the communication systems. At that point in time, my three neighbors whose yard I'm going to infringe upon, they're not going to care, they're going to be happy that I have an antenna system to communicate fairly locally. Envis does sometimes communicate DX, that's not its design, it just happens through propagation. So, let's go over and hook up the 991A and see what kind of tuning we can do with this system. Okay. Hope this will be an off band. Yeah. All right. So I think the interesting thing for me will be, can I tune this up with a three to one tuner? Let's check it out. Okay. KD4 BMG testing about 1.2 to one. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Hey, Chad, fix this thing up. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf, come now, please. Yeah, Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf, I have you 5-3-53, Tampa Bay, Florida. Roger, 5-3, Tampa Bay. Let's go 5-3 both ways. Thanks for Fox Lima. QSL, have a blast, friend, 73. Yeah, three, breaking with you, QRZ, Victor Echo. So better yet, let's go ahead and get my tuner on. Easy. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. 1.2 to 1. Yep. Great.
KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Yeah, I think tune's easy. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Wow, great. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Yeah, tuning great. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf to 5-9. You're 5-5 five, five, Tampa, Florida. Thank you, QR5 Delta Golf 5. Whiskey, whiskey, Alpha. I told you, even with an NVC antenna, sometimes you'll get DX. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Yeah, the tune is great. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Great tuning. KD4 BMG testing, no response required. <laughs> KD4 BMG testing, no response required. Less than one five to one. I hope to never find myself in an emergency situation where I need an Envis antenna for communication. But if I do, now I have a reliable one in the arsenal ready to go. I hope you found this useful, friend. I'll talk to you soon. 73.